much for joining us for the Visor launch announcement. Finally. So as you can see, we're here with our whole local team. We have our remote team. We have you here joining us for this awesome announcement. We get to announce Visor to the world. Well, without further ado, we have a teaser promo here for you. This is actually the first time that our team is watching it uh, along with you. So let's see what y'all think. The fundamental problem here is that there's not something I carry with me that I can put on and it gives me the same experience I get when I'm watching my 50 inch plasma display at home. And you know, until somebody invents that, 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 that. Let's go. That's, That's awesome. awesome. We are super excited for the release of Visor. There has been so much anticipation across our whole team. Uh, obviously, we've had it under wraps, and we are finally ready to show it to the world. Uh, if you're watching this from the Visor.com website, you can secure your Visor today. Just submit your email, and you'll be notified of pre-orders. So, Renji, give us the backstory. Why jump into hardware? Why build Visor? Yeah. Uh, at first, I definitely did not want to. Back in 2020, actually, it's funny, Big Screen came out with Big Screen Beyond. Darsh and I were texting about this in 2020 about maybe someday we're gonna get into hardware. And little did we know, <laughs> we're doing that now. At the end of the day, what I've realized is it's already difficult to build a software startup, let alone add hardware to that. Um, but you probably remember Steve Jobs saying on, on stage when the iPhone first came out, those who wanna take their software very seriously have to get serious about hardware as well. And that's what we've come to find out. And so I tried to table it. I tried to push it off for someone else to solve. But as it became more and more clear that this hardware is going to take quite a while for the general masses or the general public to adopt, I just don't want to sit around as an app on different uh, app stores for the next four or five years before it becomes ubiquitous. Uh, I do want to take advantage of this window and move faster towards that future. I really wanted to get all of the other tech giants to consider it first, right? So um, as some, if not most of you know, I flew to a lot of different uh, AR, VR tech giants uh, pitching the idea of, look, we have a ton of user usage, and based on this user data, these are the features that we can tell they are and aren't using in the hardware form factor. Uh, and so if we prioritize just these core subset of features that already exist today, we're not inventing anything new, it's just optimized for work, specifically saying we're choosing intentionally trade-offs that make it intentionally worse for gaming, intentionally worse for training and other, you know, walking a factory floor, things like that, uh, specifically to reduce the cost so we can have a visor that's very specific for just laptop work at a desk in an office. Um, and come to think about it, probably 95% of you watching this right now are watching this either on your laptop, maybe on a phone, but when, the way that you do work, you probably use a laptop for work. Going back to your point of uh, the total addressable market is no longer just how many headsets are out there uh, that the Immersed app can be downloaded to, but rather how many laptops exist out there. Uh, let's talk through some of the unique selling points of Visor, all right? So we mentioned it's made to be worn anywhere, 25% lighter than a smartphone. Um, it can fit in the palm of your hand, 4K micro OLED yeah, per yeah, eye. That's pretty exciting. wild. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's exciting, yeah. So tell me more about that. Why, why those features specifically? Yeah, so um, I'll start with the 25% lighter than a smartphone. So first off, um, a lot of our users, in order to be productive, they need to enter this mode of deep work more frequently, but also for longer periods of time. And so this is a device that we need to make sure that people aren't getting neck cramps and people are not like, hey, I have this two pound thing on my head, I just can't keep doing this. We need our users to have a, an awesome experience. Uh, even Tim, Tim Tebow thinks it's too heavy for his head, even though he's used <laughs> to wearing big football helmets. Um, and like when I think about uh, the fact that there are a lot of devices out there that are great for first person shooters or walking a factory floor, has everything on board, like a battery pack, um, has everything else in the front sort of heavy aspect of the headset too. We realize that all of our users aren't playing first person shooters or they're not necessarily walking a factory floor, they're sitting at a desk in front of a computer that has power and compute. So why not just offload power and compute to that and leverage technologies like remote rendering or leverage uh, the fact that they essentially have a laptop that can do all of this processing and we can really just have a little bit of compute on board for the sake of tracking, right? Now kind of going into the 4K per eye, um, we're moving into a future where that's gonna become commoditized and kind of the, the norm. Um, 
when it comes to text readability, it is just so important for us to be uh, presenting sc uh, sharp screens to people because they, the, the alternative is they could just have their physical 4K screen in real life. Uh, the downside to having those physical real life monitors is they can't take it with them anywhere. Uh, and we've, you know, go to YouTube, type in Screen Fiend, you'll see what we're talking about there under the YouTube channel uh, for Immersed. But for us, we realize like, if there's a way that I can take my headset and my laptop to my couch or my porch, or if I'm in an airport or in a hotel room and have my entire work set up with me at all times, that's sort of the holy grail of having, having flexibility with uh, screens or uh, your coworkers in there, productivity, anything that companies use, or even just individuals, teachers, students, day traders, legal teams, finance teams, just kind of anyone who does, who uses a computer for work or for anything productive. Uh, even people who wanna watch movies or play video games on their laptop, you can do that with whatever size screen you want at extremely high resolution that no longer makes a TV necessary anymore. Right, so I really cared about the fact that whatever types of optics or, or displays we put in this headset, it needs to be the best in the market. Uh, otherwise, I don't need to create a headset. We don't need to create a headset. Just use something else that already exists out there. So when I was thinking about the uh, built-in tracking aspect of it, it's not, a, it's not a, an easy problem to solve, right? Like computer vision, like simultaneous localization of mappings, what's called SLAM, six degrees of freedom, being able to have internal tracking so that you don't need to have external base stations, um, you don't need to just be in a three degrees of freedom setup where you're just stationary and can just kind of look around like some of the other augmented reality glass work setups we've seen out there. Uh, for us, we really care about the fact that all the tracking is on board. Like I said, one of my requirements is I should be able to just take the thing that fits in my hand and put it in my backpack and I have the entire setup with me no matter where I go. That, that's an essential for me. Uh, likewise, field of view, right? So we could have considered why not create glasses, right? Like that's what people believe is the holy grail. But the downside to that is actually a, multi a couple of things, multiple things being able to immerse yourself into a virtual environment so you can blot out distractions and really just focus on your work. Um, being able to have a wider field of view with augmented reality glasses, you get about 50 degrees field of view. That's like having a screen that only fits. I wanna be able to see multiple screens, not just one. And so we allow up to 2X that. Um, and so yes, there are some headsets out there that can do 120 or more, um, but the technology doesn't exist to give me now also the sharp text readability I also need. Uh, and so, yes, I can move my head around. We also, we also can rotate screens into view, right? We have some features coming out for that. Um, so we can do a lot in order to make it easier for people to work uh, in these sort of immersive environments, but also pass through, right? So having six degrees of freedom tracking also means you have cameras on board. So what that means is I can also use those cameras to show me the real world, but project it into the lenses. So I kind of don't even feel like I'm wearing a headset anymore. It's almost like an augmented reality experience, but it's for immersive headsets. And so having full color pass through, especially the highest resolution that's available today. Um, it's something that is required for our users because ever since Meta did a great job with their color pass through on the Quest Pro, we saw user usage. I think on average, like if a user spent on average about an hour and a half in immersed with their screens, that usage went up to about two and a half hours. And so that showed you like HD color pass through is a pretty big deal. It was something that made people feel like they weren't detached from the real world and they didn't have to feel like they have to enter sort of this escapist dystopian type environment just to be productive, right? So I feel like that that's something that is more acceptable to the office employee who wants to be able to use their laptop for work. I feel like wired is super underrated. So what's so crazy is a lot of the premium headsets you, that, that exist today that people use immersed on, uh, they end up using that headset, sitting in front of their laptop, trying to get work done. And after about an hour and a half, their battery is already at like 15% left and they have to end up plugging in anyway. And so we realized a lot of our users actually really enjoy plugging in and being hardwired to the laptop because not only do you get power, we also have way lower latency and way higher resolution. And so we realized, okay, well, if a large bulk of our users are using wired anyway, why not have both as an option? And when I need to get up, okay, well then just let me unplug and then I can go whiteboard something, sit back down, plug back in and have a seamless experience. Yeah, because uh, we're talking yeah. about like not just users who are spending 45 minutes or uh, an hour and a half, we're talking about like, you know, three hours, five hours, maybe even eight hours. And I think what's so crazy is people don't understand this part yet. Like, yes, on today's current headsets, you can't do three hours, four hours. If someone says, why would everyone have a VR headset? Four? You're in a world where, yeah, that's not possible, really. Like it's a very heavy headset, uh, what's available today. But when you start moving into a world where, no, these things are lighter than your iPhone or Android device, that changes the paradigm for sure. Mm -hmm. Three or four hours just fly by without realizing it. So talk about sleek design, why is that important? Yeah, so I think that in today's world on current headsets, it's been particularly marketed towards 
gaming type users, and rightfully so, right? Use, oftentimes you start a new product or technology category, gamers are able to really take that and run with it and help us innovate and make way better technology for general purpose users. Uh, so that's what happened in VR, rightfully so. Um, but moving forward, if we now want to attract the non-VR world or the non-gaming world, well now we need to get away from form factors that aren't as socially acceptable, things that people are willing to wear in public, um, something that people aren't self-conscious about, conscious about um, but rather something that is more akin to what's already in life. So like sunglasses or um, a helmet visor, something that's already part of life. If you're using words like, I need to ratchet th this thing to my head, it's probably not gonna be something that people are gonna be using on an every, everyday basis. But if you talk about just putting it on or being sleek, it's something that uh, people really feel like, I, I don't stand out as much using, it. people might assume I'm just wearing sunglasses when really you're getting work done. Um, and so having compelling design alongside uh, really compelling hardware that has technological capabilities that you can't really even imagine of, like imagine, that's something that I really, like, I really feel like uh, people desire and will be incentivized to go purchase. Let's talk about custom fit to you. What does that mean? I'm gonna give a lot of credit to Darshan, the CEO of Big Screen here, where his thesis is that we're moving out of a phase of, you know, from I guess 2012 to 2014 to you know, 2023, where for the past 10 years, we wanted people to try VR without having to buy it. And so they would be able to share it with their friends or maybe put it in a kiosk at Walmart and Best Buy for people to be able to demo. Um, but we're moving into a world where VR devices are gonna become a lot more personal, right? So when you think about, at least for us, your laptop or your smartphone, most of the time you're not sharing that with someone else. Most of the time it's just for you. I don't remember the last time I was like sharing my laptop for someone else to use for half a day and then I took it back. Um, and so what we want to do is be able to create a device that is custom fit for you because we want to be a peripheral just like your MacBook or your PC laptop or your smartphone. Um, again, it made sense for previous headsets when in this sort of sharing generation or this um, informational age where people have to learn about it. But moving forward, Everyone's heard about the metaverse, right? A lot of people have heard about uh, what it means to be in an immersive experience or AR, VR. But moving forward, okay, if this becomes my own personal device, IPD, light blockage, everyone's face is shaped differently. And if this is your device, we want you to feel like it's your device. Let's see what the team thinks. Uh, what are you excited about in terms of the future of Immersed and where Visor is going to take us? Uh, very excited. I'm curious, do you all know who that was speaking at the very beginning of the video? Just to call that out real quick. It's kind of a... That was Steve Jobs. That was Steve Jobs. Good answer, good answer. Good answer. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit surreal, you know, to be able to see the correlation, I think, between, you know, a, a dream that Steve Jobs had to what we're trying to build out today. Um, and I, I really like the fact that we're going for the working professional. Um, I'll mention this real quick. It was sort of a revelation for me or like a paradigm shift uh, literally last night that our total addressable market is no longer geared for VR headset users. Our total addressable market is for people who own laptops. This pair of glasses or visor will pair with a laptop to give users multiple screens uh, wherever they're at. They can take those multiple screens with them wherever they go and the form factor of these glasses will be way sleeker, way lighter, more aesthetically stylish and so for all those reasons it's, it's pretty exciting. So I'm excited as a developer and as a user uh, as a developer, we are going to have more control on the experience and we can have more impact on the, on the user experience as well. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to change the, uh, what uh, we are working experience totally. I would say that I'm excited to be able to, to bring to the market, to, to the people, to, to real people who do real work uh, in virtual reality, in mixed reality, you know, putting in mind all those constraints, all those needs. So a user-centered uh, design was kept in, into mind to bring this to, to the market, to bring this to, uh, to make it real. So that's something that we are very excited to present to our current users and all the people who maybe at some point uh, tried to use VR to do real work, but maybe they didn't feel like the, the moment has arrived. And I think the moment is now. I think what I'm most excited about for this headset is the sleek design, where a working professional can wear this for more than 40 hours per work week. Yeah. Um, I think that's gonna be a huge game changer and really will open up this market for 
anyone and everyone who's interested in increasing their productivity, the ability to view multiple screens, and I think that this is gonna blow uh, open a new class of headset. Yeah. As a user and accountant, I'm really excited about the lighter weight and the increased resolution uh, since I look at spreadsheets all day and I, I like to use Immerse while I'm working, um, just having all the multiple monitors and so I'm excited to be able to more easily use it for more than you know two hours at a time where I'm not feeling the weight after a while. So. Very excited with my spreadsheets to be immersed in the <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, just to kind of piggyback off of that, and we talked about kind of a total addressable market. Um, I think even beyond that is we, we hear so many times every day uh, folks that use the current uh, hardware that's available in the market. It's just really bulky. It's, uh, there's a lot of challenges involved um, with that. And, and they the first time they hop into Immerse, they get a lot of value and they see kind of what we're building, but it's just not really achievable in the current like generation of hardware. And with Visor, with, what's really cool about that is it's, this is kind of like a, potentially kind of like an iPhone moment, where not only from a hardware perspective, but just the, the opportunity for the more uh, everyday user to experience, uh, not just from a productivity standpoint, but even from a social experience. Um, that's, that's, that's something I'm really looking forward to seeing. I mean, yeah, so uh, for me, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm ready to replace all my monitors and never have to buy a monitor ever again. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to use it for, I mean, I use Immerse more than 40 hours a week, or <laughs> ish. Brian. Tim is one of our power we, users. We compete, yeah. <laughs> we compete pretty well. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the idea that, you know, I could, I, my goal eventually is to just not even have a keyboard or a mouse, and there's like a little wristband or something, and I just have my visor, and... That's all I take with me wherever I go. Yeah. That's that's the dream, and so I feel like we're a step closer to that. Um, yeah, I'll be playing Baldur's Gate three in it <laughs> as soon as it comes out. <laughs> no, just, <laughs> I will be working. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. awesome! So Ryan, our community manager. Um, so you've seen a lot of connections being made, people coming together, working together on a daily basis. People who have never, you know even seen each other face to face before, uh, and these people are almost like best friends. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that and, and that aspect of Immerse and how Visor can evolve that? Some of the things that we've seen the last five years has just been uh, with, with the rise of kind of remote work and now kind of the, the markets really kind of transition more to kind of like more flexible work arrangements, whether you're in the office part-time or at home part-time or you're, you're a digital nomad. Um, it's really changed like our society very uh, in a lot of ways and I think uh, for a lot of people we feel uh, we've never felt so isolated before in our lives even though we're kind of the most connected from a tech standpoint like we, you know we have social media smartphones and well the beauty of what we've been able to see and build at Immerse is that we're almost kind of building another uh, type of coworker for people so imagine just being able to work in a virtual environment and um, being able to work alongside people that may not necessarily work at your company, but you get the benefits uh, of kind of like the, the social aspect, the, the water cooler talk, um, maybe building relationships around like a certain hobby, not just uh, in, in a virtual space. And this is opening up new business opportunities, um, like VR networking. Um, in ways where uh, region or where you live doesn't put limits on that. Um, and I think that's, that's really cool. And I think um, as the technology continu continues to evolve with Visor, it's really going to open up just really how uh, the everyday office worker is able to engage with their work. And it's going to be in a, a little more delightful way. I feel like the biggest part of the Visor is all the pain points we're solving for. Namely, I mean, Caleb mentioned like the obviously the weight, which people, we always hear it, people complain, one of their biggest complaints. I also feel like the ease of use and like quickness to yeah. get set up, like that's gonna be game changing for, I, I don't know, right now it's like we have to go through all these steps with all these other hardware manufacturers, headsets, just to get our app to work. Yeah. And it's like, I just wanna put this on, instantly have my computer like synced and just, 
it's going to be great. Yeah, like, it's interesting because it's, it's also a unique use case, meaning when I play Halo on my Xbox, for example, I have no issue you know, booting up my Xbox, going to the fridge, getting a drink, and then coming back, and it's ready for me to play. Whereas when I'm getting ready to work, I'm at my desk, I'm sitting there for this thing to boot up so that I can then put it on, but it takes over a minute for it to boot up to have my multiple screens. Think about if you were to uh, receive a text and it took you a minute to boot up your phone, to go to the text and then respond, you better believe you're never gonna be responding to the texts. And so that's something we've noticed is with our users, though every single time they put it on, they are mind blown at what they've seen. Like so many times I've given demos and people didn't realize it was possible to even do this in today's world, yet, whenever it comes time to come back, because of the amount of friction we've been seeing on all the different headsets that are more optimized for gaming and training and entertainment, or rather generalized for those use cases, it just makes it very difficult for us to have our users adopt this as their daily driver. And so what our goal has been with Visor is uh, not only something that is extremely lightweight, fits in the palm of your hand, you can throw it in your book bag alongside your laptop, but on top of that, you can just open up your laptop lid and it's there, it's ready. Like you have all your screens, you just get to work. There you have it, Visor by Immersed, spatial computing designed for work. Be sure to go to visor.com and secure your spot for Visor and join the wait list. Thanks again for watching.